Hey everyone. So today we are going to talk about some of the very nice properties about eigen values. And it's good to know these properties. Uh, why? Because it's always good to know some good properties. Another reason is you can use these properties in your exam so that it will really save up your time. And also this kind of properties helps you in uh, entrance exam kind of stuff. Okay. So the first property that we are going to prove is if you have a diagonal matrix or a triangular triangular as in upper triangular as well as lower triangular matrix then in all these three scenarios diagonal upper triangular or lower triangular matrix your eigen values are always the diagonal entries so for example if you have let me take a 3 cross 3 matrix for simplicity and the rest of the entries are zero as you can see this is a diagonal matrix also it's upper and lower but yeah so since this is a diagonal matrix what are what is the determinant of this matrix determinant is nothing but abc so this is the matrix a how do you find eigenvalues you solve this equation determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 if you do this in this scenario you have a minus lambda b minus lambda c minus lambda and rest everywhere you have 0 so what is the determinant determinant is a minus lambda b minus lambda into c minus lambda equal to 0 because it is still the diagonal matrix so determinant is nothing but the product of the diagonal entries and from here you can see the product is 0 means one of them has to be 0 so lambda is a or b or c so therefore the eigenvalues for diagonal matrix are always the diagonal entries Similarly, if you have an upper triangular matrix, so the entries below are definitely zero on and above the diagonal can be anything. Here also the determinant is nothing but ABC. So when you do A minus lambda I, this will be non-zero something over here, but this is definitely zero. And what is the determinant? Again, the product of diagonal entries. So therefore we have the same equation. And even if you have a lower triangular matrix, that means this above has to be zero this entries has to be zero this can be anything then again the determinant is nothing but the product of diagonal entries we get the same equation and therefore the eigenvalues are nothing but abc so that's the importance of this matrices for eigenvalues so sometimes if in the exam you have this matrix 1 pi e 1 by 10 raised to 7 and suppose here you have 0 0 0 and here you have 3 2 3 4 5 7 raised to 10 log 5 then don't get confused don't be scared by looking at these bad bad numbers simply think yes it's, it's a triangular matrix therefore the eigenvalues are nothing but 1 pi e and 1 upon 10 raised to 7 so there's the first property that if you have a diagonal matrix or upper triangular or lower triangular matrix then the eigenvalues are nothing but the diagonal elements let's go for the second property now suppose you have a matrix a you take its transpose that means you interchange the rows and the columns then the eigenvalues remains the same it doesn't change that means eigenvalues of a matrix and its transpose is always same Let's try to prove this. See what are eigenvalues. Once you have the matrix A, what you do? You solve this equation A minus lambda I. You find the determinant of this and you equate it to 0. You, when you solve this, you get an equation in lambda, which we call as a characteristic equation. And the roots are nothing but the eigenvalues. Similarly, you do for the A transpose. You solve this, you get the characteristic equation for a transpose matrix and the roots are eigenvalues. So if I want to say that both have the same eigenvalues, what we will show is both the characteristic equations are same. So once we show those the equations are same, obviously the roots are also same. Okay. So to show that the they have same eigenvalues, ultimately it boils down to show that a and A transpose have same characteristic equations. So let's try to prove this fact. Okay. So what is determinant of, see determinant of A minus lambda I. 
but we know that determinant of a matrix is same as determinant of its transpose okay so they both have the same determinant so if a minus lambda i is some matrix you take its transpose then obviously the determinants are same but what is determinant of x minus y transpose transpose behaves very nicely it comes in so this is a transpose minus lambda i transpose so this is a transpose but what is lambda lambda is a scalar it's a number so its transpose is lambda only and what is i transpose i is an identity matrix so its transpose is again the same so what we are getting is determinant of a minus lambda i is same as determinant of a transpose minus lambda i so they have the same polynomial in lambda that means they have same characteristic equation that means they both have the same eigen values okay so if someone asks you if someone gives you a equal to suppose a is a matrix whose eigen values are 1 2 and 3 and they ask you what are the eigen values of a transpose don't find a transpose and solve this equation there has to be 1 2 3 so there's the second property let's go for the third one so here is the next one now if you have lambda as an eigen value of a matrix a that means what your a into v bar is lambda into v bar where v bar is non zero vector which is called as an eigen vector okay now one can ask once you have the eigen value for a can you tell me what are the eigen values of a inverse can you tell me what are the eigen values of adjoint of a can you tell me what are the eigen values for power of a so if i know the eigen value for a can you tell me what are the eigen values of a square a cube a raised to 4 and so on and finally if you have a matrix b which is similar to a similar means what your a is not equal to b but there exist some invertible matrix p such that when you multiply by p and p inverse you get the matrix a so if such a p exist we say that a and b are similar so these are four standard questions that one can ask i am not going to prove over here because for this the third one and the fourth one i have already recorded the lectures and i will share the link with you in the description okay well the answer is if the lambdas are non zero the eigen values are nothing but 1 upon lambda i think i should not tell you the answer otherwise you won't see those videos see the videos there i have taken some very nice examples which are very standard ones so you will find all the answers over there okay let's go for the next one now the next is i will tell you some nice connections okay so if you have a matrix a whose eigen values are lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda n okay now if you take the product of the eigen values lambda 1 into lambda 2 into lambda 3 into lambda n then this is also a number but we we see that this is a very nice number and there is a very nice result which says that the product of eigen values is actually equal to the determinant of a matrix that's why we study this eigen values because they behave very nicely and when you take the product you you get nothing but the determinant of a matrix and once you have this you can conclude very good good things good things as in suppose your a is invertible that means what is inverse exist but what is the connection of invertibility with the determinant it is invertible if and only if determinant of a is non zero okay and uh, there is one more term if a determinant is non zero such matrices we call as a non singular matrices okay so these are the things we have so if it is invertible that means what determinant is non zero so suppose we are playing over real numbers or complex numbers so since the determinant is non zero that means what the product is non zero product is non zero means what each of them has to be non zero okay so to say that a matrix is invertible then this will guarantee that lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda n none of the eigen values are zero that means all the eigen values are non zero so suppose when you have a matrix you find the eigen values and suppose eigen value comes out to be 7 13 and suppose 19 and if i ask you is the matrix invertible no need to find the inverse no need to find the determinant simply say oh yes all three are non zero therefore all three eigen values are non zero therefore the matrix has to be invertible 
okay so there's a very nice connection we have and suppose if a is not invertible that means if your a is a singular matrix that means determinant is zero that means what the product of eigen values is zero when is the product zero when at least one of them has to be zero so even if one of the eigen values become zero that means that matrix is not invertible and determinant has to be zero so if someone says that suppose you have a matrix whose eigen values are 1 5 1 0 7 3 1 16 9 1 and 0 so and they will ask you what is the determinant no need to actually find the determinant of that 5 cross 5 matrix as you can see the one of the eigen value is zero therefore determinant has to be zero so one of the very nice relation between the determinant and the eigen values another very nice property is with the addition if you have n eigen values for a matrix if you add all the eigen values we will get a number the good thing is this number is actually equal to the trace of a matrix now what do you understand by trace of a matrix trace is nothing but the sum of the diagonal elements okay so suppose if i give you a matrix like suppose this is 3 4 5 <laughs> and then whatever say 21 33 46 11 13 19 something and suppose i have not calculated but suppose the eigen values are nothing but 3 and 4 okay so lambdas are 3 and 4 question is what is the third eigen value so no need to actually solve the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 no need to do that i know that the sum of the eigen values suppose lambda 3 is the third one it is nothing but the trace trace as in the sum of the diagonal entries 5 plus 4 9 9 plus 3 is 12 so therefore your lambda 3 okay has to be 5 well the here the number coincided Uh, suppose if i give the eigen values are 1 and 9 then what is the third eigen value then this will be 1 plus 9 plus lambda 3 equal to 12 therefore the third eigen value has to be 2 so if you know few eigen values and the matrix you can find the last one so there is a very nice connection between the eigen values sum of the eigen values and the trace of a matrix so that's about the properties of eigen values well if you have any other properties which is not clear or which doesn't make sense then you can ask me in the comment section i will be happy to explain you and if this is clear then do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you